Hi everyone, welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from Newfoundland and Labrador, and I have a great guest today, Dave Ulrich, my friend, if I may call, from Utah. How are you, Dave? Meher, it is so great to see you, and uh, I enjoy you being in Newfoundland. What a great place to be from and a great place to live. So great to talk to you again, my friend. Great to talk with you also, Dave. So Dave is the world's leading authority on talent and human resources and a professor at the Roth School of Business, University of Michigan. He was recognized in 2012 with a Lifetime Achievement Award from the HR Magazine for being the father of modern human resources. So Dave, we've been speaking the last two years especially during this time. And two years ago when COVID hit, we were all surprised what's happening, what's happening to the world. And again, things are almost, COVID is almost over, if I may say, but still things are difficult these days. So in your research, in your opinion, where is HR today and how they are moving forward from this pandemic? It's a great question, Meher. And I think the last two years are actually one year because I can't separate 2020 and 21. It just, it's a- Continuous, it, I, yes. Yeah. Somebody said the other day, you know, in 2010, 10 BC before COVID, and now we're one BC, uh, PC post COVID. So that two years is kind of one. Yes. In some ways, I think what the last two years have done, and it's not just COVID, there's been social unrest with Black Lives Matter in the United States and with uh, refugees. And we're seeing some horrific things right now out of out of the Ukraine with refugees and, and all the social unrest in Asia. We see toxicity everywhere. Uh, you're lucky in Canada not to have as much toxicity politically as we have in America right now, but that toxicity shows up in television shows where the, the purpose of the show is to throw someone off the island. You know, I win, you lose. It's just, the mindset is horrible. Um, we see technology innovation. So we just see a lot of things the last two years. What I think that's done is not change the fundamentals of HR, but magnify them. Mm -hmm. And so you put a magnifying glass on them. And I think there's three that I think are getting magnified. One, HR is not about HR. It's at the table. Yeah. HR is not about HR. It's about helping the business succeed. Yes. And, and the line I've used, and I'm getting more com comfortable with it, is if you don't succeed in the marketplace, there will be no workplace. And so I'm increasingly seeing HR professionals get very focused, not just on the HR practice or on the strategy, but on customers and investors and communities. We call that outside in. Yeah. Um, by the way, that affects those who listen to your, your brilliant sessions on talent. When I go interview with a company, how will I, as the interviewee, help that company succeed in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's number one. I'll finish because I'm going too long here. Number two, what does HR uniquely do to make that happen? And I'm getting more convinced there's three things and I'm now going to make a fool of myself, which is not, not hard to do. I'm going to hold up my fingers. The, my, hand, my fingers represent talent. My fist represents the team or the organization and the combination represents leadership. Yeah. Number one. HR is not about HR. It's helping the company succeed in the marketplace through talent, organization, and leadership. And number three, my forearms represent HR, the department, the policies, the practices, the systems, the analytics. So here's how I make a fool of myself. HR people say, Dave, I can't remember what you said. Success in the marketplace through talent, organization, leadership, and HR. And then I do this. That's the foolish thing. That's the HR wave. Yeah. That's the HR dance. Um, okay, so that's where I think HR is. Now more than ever, HR is at the table. We're there. We, we don't even talk about that anymore. Yeah. But those are the three things. HR is not about HR, but market success through talent, organization, leadership, and then HR systems that make it happen. Yeah. Those are great uh, uh, talk and presentation about HR. But I also know that in your recent post on LinkedIn, you talked about importance of well-being of employees and that became the highlight during COVID time. So what are your thoughts about that? Um, there's a thing in the America, I don't know if Canada, they do high five. So you should do a high five. So put your fist yeah. up. We just high five. Uh, this morning, I woke up early. I wake up early a lot of days. My, uh, I live with my idea friends 
Uh, and idea friends are very nice because they don't make messes, but they wake me up in the morning. I'm going to post next week um, an extended piece on mental health. Mm -hmm. And I spent the last three hours thinking about it. I think, as you said so brilliantly, Mahir, that the, the pandemic started, it became an epidemic. And I learned a new word. I didn't know it. Endemic. And endemic means it's just now part of life. We're, it's not, I don't want to make that naive. Millions of people have been sick and millions have died. And I, I, I plead for them and pray for them. But now it's part of life. I have friends. Oh, I got COVID last week. I had a cold this week. The as that decreases, the increase, I think, is mental health. And I think it's going to linger longer. It's going to be around for uh, because in the pandemic, and I hope you've been vaccinated or you wear a mask and, and you isolate and you can avoid. With mental health, you can't get a shot. You can't isolate and get well. And so we've been trying to explore the field of mental health. It's a huge field. Yes. And it includes so many things from stress to depression, to anxiety, to sleeplessness, to uh, malaise. And so how do you take that big field and try to boil it down into a couple of specific things? And then what is it you do to begin to make that happen? That's the work we're in the middle of right now. That's the work I love to do. You and I have been friends uh, professionally and personally, I think for four years, I love to take big, messy things and try to make them more simple. Yes. And we're in the process of trying to do that with the mental health field right now. Thank you for your insight, Dave. And for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Dave a couple of questions and I'm going to post them on a daily basis. So kind of a journey with us. You can like all the videos, share them, leave comments. So tune in tomorrow for another great question with Dave.